and praise, oh God, for this service on tonight, God. We lift this service up before you now, Father, and we just ask that you have your way, Father God. We ask that you come in, God, to do what only you can do, oh God. We ask on tonight, God, that you just have your way. You're welcome, oh God, to have your way, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we honor you on tonight, oh God, for you to come in and heal hearts on tonight, God, for you to set the captives free on tonight, God, for you to free mindsets on tonight, God, for you to, to heal hearts on tonight, God, to bring understanding, oh God, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, oh God, through the preached word on tonight, God. We, your servants, are ready to receive on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. So we thank you, oh God. Help us to posture our hearts and minds, oh Lord, to receive what you have for us on tonight, oh God. Bless the psalm service, oh God. Bless the preached word, oh God. Bless, bless anything that, that is done in your name on tonight, God. We don't want to be out of order with anything that you want us to do on tonight, God. But we want to be in order with yes. what you want on tonight, God. Yes, we want to please your heart on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you. We love you on tonight, God. We are anticipating, yes, oh God, to receive yes, from you on tonight, oh God. We thank you on tonight, God. Yes, so we raise our expectation in this Hallelujah. place, oh God. We raise our expectation yes. in this place, oh God. We raise our expectation. Yes. In the name of Jesus. So we open up our hearts and we open up our minds, oh God, to receive what you would have for us on tonight. Father, we thank you. Bless this service now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 How many people know that God is good on today? Yeah. We just thank God for allowing us to be in the place on today just to worship Him and just to render in service on today. Thank you, Lord. Father, we adore you.
is the greatest power we shall never ever be defeated and because God is the greatest power we shall never ever be defeated and because God is the greatest power
your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon us for a thousand generations. And your family, your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon us. Father, we love you. Father, we 
as Christian brothers and sisters in order for the body of Christ to flourish and operate in a healthy manner. As we work together in unity, for example, on our jobs, a group project for school, as a member within an organization, or even on a sports team, to successfully carry out the agenda that has been set before us by man, we must also work together in unity to successfully carry out heaven's agenda, even the more in times like these that has been set before us by God. So as we are gathered here together this evening in unity, remember, we are better and stronger together. God bless and shine. Amen. As we approach this time of giving, I heard this in the spirit. We titled this conference, Broken to be Used. But I want to ask you this as you prepare your heart to give tonight. How many of you are celebrating what's going out of you? What's being pushed away from you? What's being sent out from you? See, everybody celebrates what's coming in and what's in your account, what's being added to you. But I hear God saying something tonight. He says, are you celebrating what's going out from you? Let me just drop this with you. Philippians 419 is a verse that a lot of people shout on. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But how many of you know that that's a seed verse? That verse works because the believers in that context had given to the ministry, had given to Paul, and had made sure that he didn't have a lack in the advancement of the kingdom. And so Paul says in return to them that God was going to close the gap. God was going to meet the need in your life. Here it is. God makes a promise that sowers will always have seed. Amen. And I'm saying that to you before you investigate what it is that you're going to give. Because whatever it is, it is a seed offering. You are giving to advance the kingdom. Now specifically, I was instructed to share with you that a portion of this offering tonight and tomorrow night is going to go toward the ministry in Africa that Minister Gresham was on last year for the children to get an education. She says it takes about $200 a year to get this education. Many of these people are living on a dollar and something as a salary. I don't know if that's an hour, a week, or what? A day. A day. Amen. And so this is making it difficult for those children to obtain the education. And so your seed tonight and this week is going to help support that effort. And so let's celebrate what's going out of us. Amen. I want to ask you to get that offering, whatever it is in your hand. We're not going to twist arms. We're not going to say who's got 20, whoever. Whatever the Lord has made on your heart, I want you to get that in your hand right now. Hallelujah. We want to ask God's blessing on it before we give it. I don't know if they got a tray, a bucket, or whatever we want to do, but they'll figure it out. Amen. Let's let's go to the Lord. Let's hold it up now what we're going to give. Father God, we thank you now for this seed offering that we're out to deposit into your kingdom. We're going to put it in the economy of your kingdom, God. Believing by faith that what we cast out is bread upon the water, your word declares it shall return to us after many days. God, we thank you tonight. For the obedience, we thank you for the surrender of what you've entrusted to us as a resource now that will advance your kingdom, God. We thank you now for every heart that's aligned in this will. We praise you, God, that there will be no lack in any life or any household for having given tonight. God, close the gap, restore and replenish now that there might be further and future seed that will be cast out from us. And then God, teach us to celebrate what you're sending out from us. Make us conduits tonight through this seed offering. In the name of Jesus, the Christ we do bring. And we say, Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts to give.
put it on the screen. If you, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> if you tell me, I can put it on the screen. Oh, I'm trying to get it right. <laughs> okay. Say it again. Dollar sign.
that he's been good. He's been mighty good. I thank God for you all coming out tonight. I expect God to do a work in me. In me. In me. From the inside out. Praise God. I thank God. Hallelujah. Well, this, this, this group that came, intentional choir that came, let's give them a hand. Because if you think about it, they spoke into the lives of our children. Hallelujah. How many of you have children that have not given their lives to God? So we ask in God's favor on their lives, their children's lives, and their children's children's lives. Hallelujah. And I believe in God for that. But right now, we get ready to have a song by Minister Sonia Merritt and group. Y'all be blessed. And listen, 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 listen. We need to read y'all. I want you all to get into the service. Let me God where he is and he'll meet you where you are. Hallelujah. So as they worship, I want you to worship along with him. And let God use you without consulting you first. Go for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We praise God for being here tonight. How many came with expectation? How many came with expectation? Yeah, because you will get what you expect. If you don't expect much, you won't get much. If you expect nothing, you'll get nothing. But I dare you to lift your hands to the Lord. I dare you to lift your hands toward heaven. And say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I came to worship you. I came to celebrate your great name. I thank you, Lord God, for the empty tomb. I haven't forgotten, Lord, what we celebrated just last Sunday. That, Lord, there was an empty tomb. Hallelujah. That you still do great things. Hallelujah. That you called us together for such a time as this. This is our purpose that he calls. Hallelujah. God called us here with intention. Yes. With intention. And so tonight, I just encourage you to make an altar where you are. We're getting ready for the word of the Lord. And as we do that, we want to posture ourselves in a place of surrender. And as I begin to prepare for tonight, I continue to ask the Lord what song. I wanted something fast. I wanted something encouraging. But I couldn't get past yes. I couldn't get past the question that the Lord has for our soul. You know, years ago when I got saved, one of the songs that really brought me and taught me and delivered me was an old school yes. We didn't have any other word, yes. Halfway, yes. And so tonight, as we begin to prepare our hearts for the word of the Lord, God has a question for us. And he's asking us, will you say yes? He says, there's more that I have required of you. And for those of you that are in the room like me, and you're a little seasoned, uh -huh, got a couple of years under your belt, sometimes we feel like, well, we're going to just sit down and just let the young ones do it. But Holy Spirit is saying to all of us, to the young, to the seasoned life, He's saying, I have something for you. Yeah. And tonight, I have decided that I am not going to be here in vain. Yeah. I came here tonight with intention yeah. Yeah. and with expectation. Yeah. And so tonight, Holy Spirit is asking us, if I told you what I really wanted to do with my life, would you say yes then? Yeah. Yeah. If you realize that there were going to be some waters for you to wade through, some demons for you to speak to, some mountains for you to look at, speak at, declare, what will you say? And so tonight as we prepare our hearts, I challenge you tonight to wherever you are to make this 
and answer of his soul. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. Yes. And another version says, I know the expected end I have for you. And so tonight, whatever you're facing, sometimes when you're in the middle of life, it's hard to say yes. Because it's a little tight. Sometimes saying yes calls to life. It's costly. Yes. But the Lord says tonight, for I know the plans I have for you. You will not drown through the waters that you're walking through. The fire will not consume you. You'll walk through the fire and you won't smell like smoke. Will you just say
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What an awesome psalmist. Give me that praise and worship. Thank you so much, um, Minister Sonia and your and your ministering team. Thank you, my son Mario. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so much. Well, my assignment is to introduce the speaker. Well, I assumed that I was going to get a bio, but I didn't get my bio, so I'm gonna have to just go on. <laughs> No, you know what I'm going to do? Mm, I ain't going to do that. All I can tell you, he can preach. You know, he's anointed to preach. He, he really is. Yeah. But I think his wife would do a better job. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. So, Lady Latrice will come and introduce her husband to come and to preach to us on tonight. Who knows her baby? Who knows her baby is right? Hallelujah. Well, I'll do it. I do. I do. I do. I would yell it. Yell it and tell him. I would yell it. Yell it. Yell it. Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm back again. <laughs> well, we thank God on tonight. What can I say about a parcel? I won't go there, but anyway. Are y'all ready for a word from God? Yeah. Yeah. Don't play. Yeah. Do not play. Yeah. Because God has a word just for you, amen? Yeah. Yeah. And he has put on assignment Apostle Abraham Moore, the pastor of the Intentional Church. Yeah. Expectation, the ones that have high expectation, amen. There's some things to be changed on tonight, amen. Are you looking for your mind to be changed? Are you looking for your heart to be changed? Your spirit to be changed? Come on, I need for somebody to stand all over this room. As we begin to pray for the man of God and for the word of God, I need for everybody to lift your hands. This man of God lays before the Lord. He takes But he will give you everything of God in the name of Jesus. So as we pray and as he comes, I want to introduce to you the light in my life. The light in my life. My husband. My boo. The ranch and my chicken salad. The peppers, the onions, everything. As he comes, come on, let's let's lift our hands to God. Come on. Let's get back focused. Just know that God has a word for you on tonight. And he is going to speak through the man of God. So on tonight, I need for you to pull on his anointing. I need for you to pull on the power that's within him. I need for you to pull on God tonight so that you can get everything you need. We don't want to leave this place the same way, amen? And we will stay until everybody gets what they need on tonight. So as we honor God on tonight, for the man of God that's going to bring the word, introducing Apostle Abraham Moore, the intentional church, come out with Right where you are for one moment. Hallelujah. One thing that I've learned is that God will never come into a place and not perform. Hallelujah. That's right. Glory to Jesus. Whatever issue, whatever problem, whatever burden that you have here tonight. 
You ever believe and know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask of Him? And I, I, I feel something so heavy in my spirit. Uh, he told me to tell you, and he said, prophesy this to you, that it is now over, it is finished. Amen. Amen. The thing that the devil tried to do did not work. It did not work. Glory to God. It did not work. Glory to Jesus. Now we rebuke that diagnosis in Jesus' name. It did not work. And we decree and declare now that God is here to, to perform miracles. And I believe that there is a word, amen, for people who have who are broken. Uh, because one thing that I have learned uh in this season uh, that I'm in now is is that uh, there's a certain group that God is getting ready to use and I'm sorry uh, I, I'm sorry uh, but there's a certain group that God is getting ready to use and he's getting ready to use the broken those who amen have gone through some things but those that have struggled with some issues because one thing that I do know uh, your issue, amen, li li listen, your your issue, what, what, whatever it is, amen, will not stop the calling that's on your life. And we decree that by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I need somebody to shout, my calling is bigger than my issue. Uh, I wish I had somebody to shout, my, my calling is bigger than my issue. Amen. And, 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 and let me tell you something, amen. If you are anointed, you got an issue. Uh, uh, come on. Uh, well, why did you say? Why did you say that, Apostle? Because uh, anyone, I anybody who has an anointing on their life, the devil always finds something. Amen. He's always trying to, amen, to get us to fall and get us to shift. Amen. Get us to do things that is not of God. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. But there gotta be somebody here tonight. Amen. Yes, listen, yes, I know, I, I know we're seasoned saints. And we got some young folk in here, but all of us, the Bible said, have fell short of the glory of God. Amen. So I'm just grateful. Amen. That he didn't kill me while I was messing around. Y'all. God, y'all, I'm just grateful tonight, amen, that God had enough, amen, that he still had his hands on me. I wish I had a praiser in the room that you could just look down your road and say, God, still going to use me. I, I don't care. I don't care what the devil say. I don't care what my family say. I don't care what my husband, what my wife say, what my sisters or my brothers. Amen. I don't even care the one that know about my past. God still going to use me. Second Corinthians, uh, uh -huh. go to your Bible, Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We're going to start with verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay. To show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not of us. Yeah. I, I'm just going to read seven. I, I deal with that, but I'm just going to get seven. Oh, yes, Let me read it again. But we have this treasure in jars of clay oh, yes. to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not of us. Preach. Preach. Uh, Preach. So I, I want to Preach from uh, a subject. I'm a crack pot. Come on now. Yes, sir. Come on now. You gotta preach that. A crack pot. Uh, it still has use. Yes. It's crack. I'm gonna tell you, I'm a crack pot. I'm a crack pot. Um. Y'all can take your seat for one moment. Uh, 
I don't want y'all to judge me when I uh, when I what I'm about to say, but I'm a fan of old time pottery. Every now and then, you know the store. I'm a fan of that store. And uh, I check. That's fine. I check. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan of that store, and uh, and every now and then a decorative spirit get on me. All right. you know, I, you know, I like to. Okay, don't judge me now. I, 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 I like to go in and, and, and look at stuff and and uh, picture how I would decorate my house or, or envision some stuff that God is going to do, and uh, so I'll. I, I go, see, I prophetically shop. That's how I do. I go uh, put my eyes on it and then tell God this is what I want. Um, and so I, and this, a few years ago, I walked into Old Time Pottery. And uh, to my amazement, there was this beautiful vase that was sitting on the shelf. And this vase was very beautiful, but this vase had one problem. Uh, this vase was cracked. Uh, this vase was broken, and uh, I, I, I talked. But I, I wanted it so bad because even though it was broken uh, by who created the vase and by the name of what that vase was, I know I know it still had value uh, based upon who created it. Uh, the owner, the owner of the company, had some power. And so even though I knew that the bars was broken, it was cracked, it still had value. And so one of the cashiers, uh, here I am, uh, I'm going into thug mode now. Thug because mode. now I'm going to try to talk my way down so she can drop the price on it. Y'all know. Okay, ain't nobody talking. Y'all know how we do. Amen. We, we, we start talking real good, amen, to get the price a drop on it just because it was broken. And I asked the question, I, I, and I asked the cashier, I said, why is this uh, vase broken? She told me, uh, Apostle Moore, she said, too many hands been on it. Then God began to speak to me. He said, that's what's wrong, amen, with some people in the church. Amen. They're broken and they're hurt. Amen. And they feel like they have no value. It's because too many hands been on them, y'all. God, I wish I had. I, I wish, I wish, I wish I had. Amen. Somebody in the room, too many hands. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about too many Polish pastors been on them. Amen. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. I, 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 I'm, I'm talking about too many people. Amen. That, amen. That has been on them. Too many hands have touched what had value. And she said there was uh, just too many hands been on it. Somebody will come by, look at it, pick it up, decide they don't want it, and then drop it. Isn't that how the, the, the church operates, amen? They'll use you until they break you and then put you down when they don't want you no more. And I asked God this. I said, God, now, this is, uh, this is absolutely, I, I, I know you're speaking to me. And so after that, uh, the lady left. And, um, and so it, it bothered me because she said that too many hands have been on this vase, but where it was, she didn't move it. Okay. And so it bothered me. I said, okay, well, I, I, I walked off. And uh, see, and, and if you're real, if you're a real shopper, this is how you operate. Amen, amen. You leave it and you pray that, amen, that something will happen. And by the next couple of days, I come back, maybe they didn't drop the price a little. And, and, uh, and, and, and so I waited, I waited a couple of days, went back to that, because that's how bad I wanted it. I, I went back, amen, that decorative spirit, uh, don't kill me, but I, I, I went back, amen, and I looked at it again, and I couldn't find it. Uh, 
it, it troubled me because I really wanted it, but I couldn't find it. So I, I, I saw the same cashier again. And I asked her, where is the vase? And you know me, where is the vase that was sitting on this lower shelf? She said, it's still here. We just set it on a higher shelf so no one can touch it. <laughs> so here's what, what messed me up. I noticed that, hey amen, it was still broken, but it went to a high level. And so I just believe that we're in a season now that God is about to raise and set some broken folk on another level. God, I wish I had a praiser in the room that you can even declare out of your own mouth that you've been misused by some people. Amen. The wrong hands have been on you that caused you to shift and, and caused you not to operate in who you are. Sometimes God will take that same vessel that all kinds of hands been on, ship them to another level where those hands that used to be on them can't get to them no more. But I, I, I believe that God is speaking to a, a man, the body of Christ that he's about to set us on another level. Amen. All those who have been broken and all those who have been misused. I, I want you to just lift your hand and shout, God is about to set me on another level. God, I feel the anointing here. Amen. Just like the neighbor. and said, neighbor, God is about to set us on another level. I don't care about the hell you've been through. I don't care, amen, how they misused you. I don't care how they took advantage of you. Amen. But I come, God, I come, I come, I come to let everyone know in the room today that, they, amen, that everything you went through, God had a plan behind it. And I wish, God, I wish, I wish, I wish I had a worshiper in the room that said God had a plan behind that mess. Amen. Because he wanted to use my brokenness to shift me to another level in hell. Tell your neighbor you're going, you're going. to another level. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like I need to tell tell somebody this, but some folk ain't going to like you next month. You better hear me. You better hear me what I'm saying. Yeah, some folk ain't going to like you next month. Uh, because I heard the Lord say, hey, amen, that there's about to be a quick work concern. Amen, amen. I need somebody to shop quick. Amen. There's about, about to be a quick work concerning you. And some folk ain't going to like you next month because they saw you crying last week and now you shouting. And see, one thing that I believe, amen, that God, amen, is doing with the people now, amen, is because he's using you to confuse people. Oh, shoot, amen. And so now they're going to start looking at you as if, how in the world could you who, who have gone through what you have gone through and you have the audacity to give God praise like you're giving him? I just wish I had, oh, God, a praiser in the room. Amen. That can jump up on your feet and show every demon, every witch, every warlock that you still alive. The plan that the devil has for you did not work. I want you to touch your neighbor, the neighbor. I'm broken, but I'm usable. Yeah. 
Just because a pot is cracked don't mean it can't hold nothing. Are you hearing me? Just because a pot is cracked don't mean it can't hold nothing. Amen. And so instead of you, 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 what people are doing is that they're looking at the crack instead of the substance that you got. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell me, I got substance. And you can look at my flaws all you want, but I got substance. Amen. And you can talk about my issue all you want, but I got substance. Amen. You can call me everything but a child of God, but I got substance. And so, amen, I'm going to show you in the Bible that God did not use perfect people to fulfill his plan. We so churchy. Y'all can sit down on that one. We so churchy. That we believe that miracle or the work can't be performed unless it's through a clean vessel. We so churchy. And so God is trying to show the body of Christ. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm getting ready to bring folk up again in this season like I brought through the Bible days. Amen. Where, amen, I call imperfect people. I call broken people to do a perfect work. Oh, God, y'all better hear me. Shout broken. This is amazing because uh, I, I, I quote this, and this is good to me. Vance uh, Hamner said this, God uses broken things. Yes, sir. Yeah. He said that God uses broken soil to produce a crop. Yeah, it is so. Uh -huh. Broken clouds to give rain. Uh -huh. Broken grain to give bread. Yeah, oh my. And broken bread to give strength. I just believe, amen, that we're, we're, we're getting ready to see, amen, what some broken stuff can do. Uh, I, I want you to shout, God uses crack pots. This is so good. It, it, many people believe that God only chooses super sinless saints who have never had an evil thought. Oh, Pastor, I, 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 Pastor, I, 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 I've been wondering. Uh, uh, but, but that's the mindset of the church because uh, let the truth be told and I'm going to say it like I feel it because I ain't scared of nobody. Everybody in here got something nasty in them. Y'all don't want to talk. Now I know it. 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 Uh, but look at your neighbor's and neighbor, you got something nasty in you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you maybe ain't doing nothing nasty, but you got a nasty mouth. Y'all no, no, ain't talking. Your mouth nasty. Yeah, man, yeah. Speaking tongues on Sunday. Amen. Then cuss folk out on Monday. Y'all better hear me what I'm saying. Amen. Uh, and, and, and so, and so we're, we're, we're in a season now, amen, uh, that, uh, that God is about to uh, destroy the religious mindset uh, that the church has, amen, because we are so quick, amen, to judge folks who come in the house of God, and just because they got on the arm, the tattoos on the neck. Amen. Just because they got earrings in the ears and earrings in the nose. We are so quick to judge. Hey, y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking. But let me tell you some God going to raise up some tatted preachers. Hey, Amen. Just don't go to places that you don't want to go to. Hey, Amen. God, I need some 
preacher, not in the house of God. But give me a tatted preacher that's going to go to the crack house and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where are my crackpots? The main one that we're judging is the one that God's hand is on. I said, God, I said, God, what's wrong with the church? And he began to speak to me. He said, because the church has demonized what they can teach. And so when they can't, when, so when they can't handle people that's not like them, they demonize them. So we're demonizing folk that we have no anointing to handle. But I'm telling you, what God is doing in the church house today, what he's doing now, I'm sorry, church. I'm sorry, church, I'm sorry. But you got to change, church. Church, I'm sorry. Church, you got to change, church. Church, I'm sorry. Church, I'm sorry. But church, you're going to have to church. We're going to have to change. Amen. Because we're going to lose a generation. We're, we're going to lose a generation. And here's what the Lord began to speak to me. He said to tell the church tonight. Amen. That listen. Uh, the people who are broken. It's not that. Amen. They're not holy. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so here it is. Amen. We we judge holiness by apparel. Amen. But 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 church, I'm sorry. Church, I'm sorry. Amen. But but the next generation, they coming in with joys and days and jerseys on. I'm sorry. Church, I'm sorry. Amen. There's another generation that is coming. And if we don't get our church itself together, amen, we're gonna miss the next move of God. Amen. Because God said, I'm not using those anymore. Y'all ain't talking, y'all ain't talking, y'all ain't talking, y'all ain't talking. Can you handle who coming in broken? That's what we need to be working on. Can we handle who coming in broken? Help me, help me because I, this is the part I don't understand is that why we think the church is supposed to be clean. The last time I checked, the church was on a cross and he was bloody. And so God is doing something in this particular season that we are shout on a crack pot. I'm a crack pot. God. <laughs> but why did I why did I sense that that laugh you just laughed was something else? <laughs> wow. You know he's a here, crack lady. But look at God. Wow. See, I don't know where to shout, man. You got a miracle right in front of you. See, that's what's wrong with the church. Y'all ain't talking. God chooses the foolish and the weak things of the world. Let's talk about this. Noah got drunk. 
Yes, he did. Abraham lied about his wife. Yes, Sarah lied at God. Yes. Jacob was a deceiver. Yes. Moses murdered an Egyptian. Yes. Rahab was a shit. Y'all already know. <laughs> Gideon was a wimp. Samson had serious problems with his lust and anger. Eli failed as a father. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Elijah struggled with depression. Jonah ran away from God. Peter denied Christ. Paul persecuted Christians. Barbados compromised the gospel. David John wanted special seats in the kingdom. Everybody had... Everybody was broken. Broken. In some form of fashion. Yes, sir. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't gonna let you talk about me no more. The Bible says in Psalm 34 and 18, the Lord is near to the broken heart. And he saves those who have it, who are crushed in spirit. Yes, sir. Now, here, here it is. If the Lord is near, why, why are we afar? Oh, my. Oh, my. Because I want to be where God is and I want to be with the people that God is helping. Yes, 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 yes. He said the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Y'all got that? I want you to shout with me. I'm a crackpot. But I'm a treasure. But I'm a treasure as well. As well. Paul talked about in Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse seven. He talked about a great treasure in such a humble container. Uh, broken people are humble. Yeah. Uh, broken people understand where they came from to get to the level that they are now. And so their mindsets are different from those who never gone through nothing. Yes, uh, sir. God help me. And so and, and so now uh, Paul is beginning to talk about that such a great treasure, amen, in such a humble uh, container. He said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And I begin, I begin to ask God. I said, God, amen, why in this season, amen, are you getting ready to replace some people? Uh, Y'all don't believe that, do you? Oh, shoot. Hey, man, just turn to your neighbor. Hey, there's some folk that are about to be replaced. Hey, man, because some folk, hey, man, are too high-minded. Hey, man, for God to use. Y'all ain't talking. I feel, God, I feel the anointing. He said, hey, here it is. And so, and so broken people, hey, man, have the concept that what God is doing through them is not them. Uh, but it is of the power, amen, of God working uh, on the inside of them. Amen. Shout, there's power in me. Amen. Amen. Not of me, but amen, but of God. Amen. And so, amen. So when we get back, amen, to the place that we understand that everything that's working through us is not us. It is of the power of God. 
the treasure is the greatness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the glory of God made evident through that gospel. It is the very light of God and the light of the knowledge of the glory of God reflected in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the greatest treasure in all creation shall all creations. And so repeat after me, say, we have this treasure in urban vessels. When Paul considers us as other earthen vessels, he is discarding the body or considering it merely receptacle for the soul. And instead, Paul simply cares the value of God's light and the glory and the value of what he chose to put his light and his glory into. Y'all yeah. 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 hear that? Y'all no, hear that? Paul said, God chose who he going to put his light and glory into. Oh, God, I felt that. God chose. God did. Paul said God did. He chose. So, so apostle now, now, I ain't talking about you. I ain't talking about you. But, but, but we got some churches for him. Amen. They got a problem with who God used. The, the, the church, amen, the people of God, amen, we, some folk got a problem with who God uses. Right, right. And so Paul said, God makes that decision. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not our decision to make who God uses. It's our job to disciple them. Our job is to disciple what God has put in them. God, y'all. Yes, yes, uh, uh, are are y'all hearing me? Yes, are y'all hearing me? Y'all yes, hearing me? Yes, yes, yes. Listen, 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 this, this, this is good. It, this, this is good. He said, God, Paul simply, this is so good. The, the, the smartest of who is worthy to be a contender. For God's light and glory. Apostle, the smartest person ain't, ain't worthy enough. Uh, y'all hear me? What? Y'all, this is good. This is it. The purest person isn't pure enough. The most spiritual person ain't spiritual enough. And the most talented person isn't talented enough. We all just clay pots holding on to unspeakable great treasures. Jesus. There is nothing that we can do that can make us worthy. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that makes us worthy. And so when God starts using broken people, uh, I don't look at them, I see Christ on them. God help me. Uh, tell your neighbor Christ is in them. Shout earthen vessels. Now this is good. Write this down if you will. Uh, earthenware vessels were common in every home in the ancient world. They were not very durable. And they were useless if broken. They were thus cheap and had no value. But God chose to put his light and the glory on everyday dishes. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God Let me tell you why the fine china is no good. Because you only bring it out on who you want to feed it on. 
Y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking. Amen. Who got some china in your house right now? Lift your hand. If you got some special dishes that you don't use and you don't put no food on until a certain kind of folk you want come over your house. Ain't nobody want to talk to me. Ain't nobody want to talk to me. And, 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 and so can you imagine, can you imagine, amen, how God looks at people in the church who are considered fine china. The only time they want to prophesy is to who they like. The only time they want to preach, amen, is to who they want to preach to. But I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, God said, if anything, go be broken. I'm getting ready to break back. Boy, I raised a lot of mine. Like, I gotta go home and do something that fine child I got now. Yeah. Yeah. Shout every day. Um, I got a cup in the cabinet. I call it my cup. And, uh, and it's sitting in the cabinet. Yep. That's whatever I want. A cup of coffee. I go with that cup. And you know what, Pastor? Every time I use that cup, it do me right. <laughs> that cup don't let me down. It's able to hold what I'm trying to intake. And so here it is, here it is, here it is. Sonia, that cup is thankful to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And so, Apostle Juan, what is God saying? He said, I'm getting ready to send the church some everyday dishes. I'm talking about apostles of dishes that's going to be faithful to the church. I'm talking about some dishes that's going to be faithful to your assignment. I'm that's gonna be faithful to the call on your life. The Lord said He got to get rid of this fine child who just wanna be used every now and then. Only time preachers wanna come to church is when they started to preach. First Sunday preachers. Yeah. I'm gonna see them the second Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but when they take time to do call to worship, they show up. Yeah. They are fire in China. Yeah. They only want to be used at certain issues at certain times. That's a real good one when company. But who God is getting ready to use now are those that we consider everyday dishes. You can pull on them anytime and they'll be willing to use. Because the look of the church don't look like me no more. He said, I'm getting ready to change the look of the church. He said, I'm getting ready to bring back all those who had leprosy. That the church cast out. Because they were too filthy. 
penalty for you to hug them. And so what we did was, amen, we fed them lemon cookies and bologna sandwiches and set them on the back pew of the church until church was over. Everyday dishes. Shout everyday dishes. Everyday dishes. I tell uh, I tell Tanya this all the time. I tell her this all the time. If you ain't using it in three months, I'm gonna get rid of it. Because pastor, whatever is not getting used is taking up space. See, I wish I had some brave prophets and they're going to go back to your churches and you just take them slaves. So why would God take a risk on some broken? Why did God choose risky earthen vessels instead of safe and heavenly ones? Because sometimes what we do is that we go with what's safe. Now I'm talking, I'm going to be honest. Now come on, come on, come on. We go with what's safe. Because if I go with the broken, I'm going to have to deal with the issues of the broken. And, and we don't want to deal with the issues of the broken people. And so we ride with those who are saved. I don't have to go to safe people's house and pray for them. Oh, God, y'all ain't talking. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I, I don't have to pay much attention to safe people. Come on. But those who are broken, amen, it's going to really show me if I'm called or not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the reason why the church deal with safe people, and the reason why preachers and pastors and prophets and church apostles deal with safe people, because. 
because it don't challenge their anointing. Um, there's some folk here that she has right now. And I ain't scared of none of them. But there, but 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 I pastor some broken people. The rascal of money, though. Oh God. Their, their, their creative mindset and how they come up with ideas just mess me up. Hey, you know, and, and, and so, and, and, and so, but, but I pastor a lot of broken people. And so when you pastor broken people, you don't sleep. Because your mindset is on helping them. Shout her the nestle. That God chose yeah. to put his light and his glory yeah. into them. Yeah. And turns it into them. We hate it. Yeah. This was God's choice. Because let the truth be told. I was fine cussing. I was fine drinking. I was fine. Y'all ain't talking. I was fine holding my hand. That weed was good. That powder was good. I was fine right where I was. Until God decided. Yeah. <laughs> 
when I wake up in the morning and I see somebody on the street, let me pray for them. God, let me, let me wake up every morning and see the alcoholic sitting in the corner laying by the store. Don't let me walk by it. Use me, God, every day. Fine channel sometimes only come down on Sunday. Come out on a special holiday yeah. on Sunday, but yeah. God says I'm looking. On some everyday issues. Yes, Glory to God. the drug dealer over the preacher. I'll take the prostitute over the prophetess. And in the right hand, the, the trumpets are blown. And they cried out for, and they cried out and swore to the Lord and for Gideon. Every man stood in the place around the camp. And all the army ran. They cried out and fled. When they blew 300 trumpets, the Lord said, Every man swore against the country and against the army. And the army, my God, amen, they fled as the border by top of. And verse 23 says, And the men of Israel were called out from Nathia and the Asha and, and all from Manasseh, and they pursued after me. Wow. Here it is. God used somebody who was considered to be the lowest of the lowest. He used somebody out of the tribe of Manasseh who considered to be the, 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 the lowest tribe, considered to be the most broken tribe. And God used them. The Lord showed me this, and uh, and I said, God, you sure you want me to tell them this? He said, yeah, tell them. He said, the membership of the church is getting ready to change. Wow. 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 Wait, God, I don't know why you should tell them everything. <laughs> but he said, the membership of the church is getting ready to change. What are you saying? He said, because we got too many in our churches who are doing nothing. And so what's 
happening is now Kim, the Lord is saying, okay, in order for me to get glory, I got to get rid of who you trusted. Wow. Oh. 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 I, 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 I know nobody want to, they, they, they don't want to hear this kind of stuff, but hey man, but we have put our trust in people. Amen. Ask if people keep the doors of the church open. Oh. But it is a hand of God. Yeah. It is a power of God. Yeah. It is a preaching of the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ that keeps doors open. So here it is. I'm saying this to tell you the second part. God got to get rid of the 10,000 wow. so he can send you to 300. Yeah. 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 So get it now, get it, that's too many. Yeah. Because there are too many folk yeah. who ain't doing nothing right. and they're not fighting. Anyway, 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 give me some who's going to rap like dogs. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> give me those who don't look like church. Be careful who he casts out. Because these broken people that's coming into church now, they're becoming many now. They got stupid ideas. They're YouTube bloggers. And they, they know how to make money. And, and, but they're looking for a place, amen, for someone to take care of them and provide for their soul. And so God is getting ready to use broken people. Here's what I want. Here's what I want. What does it do? It demonstrates his surpassing power. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Number two, it demonstrates not what we can do for God, but what he can do through us. Yeah. Number three, it demonstrates that our worth is not in earthenware, yeah. but in the treasure that lies yeah. within us. Yeah. 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 The treasure within us is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Surrendered yet. 
There shouldn't be a message every Sunday. Because there should be moments where broken people flood the altar. And just worship. One more time. I'm going to ask you the question. One more time. How do broken people worship? I'm going to ask you one more time. Because maybe some of y'all on the yellow bus. How do broken people worship? They come to the altar. And they bow down and worship because they realize that I'm a filthy rag. But it is because of the blood of Jesus that covers my sin, that covers me. How do broken people worship? I asked that question to expose the church. I asked that question to expose the church. So maybe the reason why you don't worship is because you feel you're not broken. And so that's why God can't use you because of the mindset you have. Man, I come, I, I, man, I come and challenge the church. I'm gonna ask you a question one more time. How do broken people worship? You are here. Turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Mending every heart. You are here, hey, Lord. Me in the air. 
Now let's pray for him. God, we thank you for this word that you poured into him. Hallelujah. And he has poured out to us, God. I pray, God, that you will refill him. Refill him. Refill him, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will give him another anointing of your presence in his life, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will take him higher, God, even in his ministry, Lord God, and send the crackpots, hallelujah, in his direction, Lord God, so that he can fill them with your word in the name of Jesus. Bless he and his family. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Did you all enjoy this powerful word tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for this man of God. And God, he allowing God to use him. Saying things that many won't say. Hallelujah. But it needs to be said. And I thank God for that. I also thank God for Pastor Larry Davidson and him coming in and doing the call to worship. I thank you for, for him doing that. He has a willing heart and he has a heart for, for the people of God. I praise God for that. Um, I thank each and every one of you all for coming out and fellowshipping in the spirit of, in the spirit of unity. God is calling for his people to come together, to get his body together, so that we can be effective in the, in the, in the, in the ministry as a whole. Hallelujah. Now, on tomorrow night, we are having um, service again starting at 7 o'clock. Intercessory prayer starts at 6.30. Um, you see what happens when prayer is um, saturated, saturated place in prayer. And I believe God is going to do a mighty work on tomorrow night. Our guest speaker is Dr. Cynthia McInnes from Brooklyn, New York. Now let me tell you. Y'all think I had it tonight? Honey. In the words of Bishop T.D. Jakes, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I am so looking for She's never been to Alabama. Never been this far south. And so she, she posted on Facebook, I'm coming to Alabama, y'all, and I want to see all of y'all. Because that's what she posted yesterday. So I'm hoping that you all will come out again tomorrow and be saturated with the presence of God. And I believe God is going to do take us even higher, take all of us crackpots a little bit higher. Hallelujah. Um, I want to thank uh, Minister Sonia and her group again for coming out and ministering under the power of God. Thank you so much. I want to give honor to Pastor Carolyn Lucas is in the house. Praise God. Praise God. And Minister Charlie Jenkins. And this is what I'm talking about. Bringing the body of Christ together from different churches. I love it. Um, is there anybody else? I'm, y'all musicians are off the chain. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Praise God. Did I hear somebody over here said that they were... Your testimony, I didn't see because my head was turned. Who was the testimony? He was trying to be shy. That's that, that's that humble. That's that humble one you were talking about. It was you. Look at what God has done. God still uses broken vessels. Praise God. I thank my. I thank God for my friends, Minister. Uh, Benita McLean, she helped me get this thing, helped me get this thing together. Praise God. Um, Minister um, Eloise, that's my, that's my role partner right there. Minister Eloise McNeely and my friend Minister Jackie um, Jackson. And I got to say this, I got a special group here, y'all. Y'all ready for this? All the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Came all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. We had Minister Gail Butler, we had Judy, and we had Jackie. Thank you all so much for coming so far to fellowship with us. And thank you for the sound man. Thank you so much, Minister Cor uh, Deacon Cord. Deacon Cord. <laughs> but we're going to let you, and listen, I can't let this person go. Minister. 
fair miles flowers. This man has, he, you're talking about a, a, a servant heart. He has a servant's heart. Amen. And I thank you for, he's the one who's um, chaperoning, if you please, our, our guest from Tulsa. He's bringing them back and forth every day from the hotel. So thank you for that. I'm appreciative. Well, guys, we're getting ready to leave. Pastor Larry, um, if you don't mind, Pastor Davidson, I'm sorry. I call him that. I call him that on the outside of the church. Pastor Davidson, if you don't mind, come and let us sing the prayer and let us out tonight. Amen. I just have to say, did not our hearts burn as that man of God was walking heavy through that text tonight. And we are blessed and we're better because of it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for what you have distributed and poured out in this place on tonight. What it was with expectation and anticipation we did enter in. Now our hearts have been filled and challenged. We praise you for this man of God that you sent our way to encourage us through the word. We pray that the truth, the nuggets and nourishment that come from that word would be evident in our lives as we go forth. We pray, God, in advance for tomorrow's worship experience. We pray for your saturation and your holy presence to fill this house. We pray, God, for those individuals that will receive their healing and their deliverance. We pray, God, in advance for those in our community that will receive theirs as well. God, we pray for the peace, the prosperity, and the protection over our city. Let there be no unnecessary loss of life tonight. Let there be rest in our city. We praise you, God, that you awaken the saints to the calling and the assignment on our life. God, we thank you that our sins were not enough to cancel your calling. We ask and pray, God, that you would move us now in obedience. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit be with us all as we go forth from this place. And the believing church said, Amen. Before we go, I'm I'm so I'm so sorry, y'all. I forgot somebody. Somebody very special. Apostle Phyllis Morton. I totally forgot. I didn't mean to do that. I have seen I have seen you admit moments. No, mine have gone from moments to minutes. Okay. And she will be preaching at our prayer breakfast on Saturday. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you.